And the red, red robin goes bob, bob, bobbing along. What movie is that from? Welcome to Dinner Party Tonight, Movie Night. Today we're going to be making some foods from some of my favorite movies. I was lucky enough to be born in 1963. The 70s is when I started going to the movies. Some of the great classics of all time were made in the 70s, certainly American movies. So today, we're going to be making a deep quote food from Jaws. The only person who ever got the quote was Nick Goldner. Then we're going to make Nipples of Venus from Amadeus. Then we're going to make a very famous food from Close Encounters. What food could it be? Hmm. We're going to make apple pie with a slice of melted cheese from Taxi Driver. Then we're going to make sunshine eggs or, or eggs in a hole from Moonstruck, which now we're moving into the 80s, right? So let's make some crazy shit from the greatest movies mostly ever made. So in 1975, I was 12. I was taken to see Jaws. I lived on the vineyard four months of the year, and I was taken to see Jaws by our au pair girl, Leslie Billington, who was English. Now, you have to understand, it was filmed on the vineyard. So when you're watching Jaws, it was traumatic for everybody, but I'm watching it and they're showing the beach where I go swimming, not some nameless beach, okay? The opening scene, I'm not drunk when he's running, is South Beach. Everybody knows that. When uh, Ben Gardner's head comes out of the boat and everybody screams, and I was transfixed, and I, I think I've told you guys this before, I thought to myself, I wanna be, I wanna make that. I don't wanna act in it, I don't wanna watch it. I wanna make the scene, make the people scream. So, it was the beginning of directing. And I looked next to me and the seat's empty. And I hadn't noticed Leslie had run out of the theater when Ben Gardner's head came out. And I'd been alone for an hour and a half. I had no idea. Um, anyways, in Jaws, when Brody's kid is pulled out of the water, you remember you see the kid's legs are okay, then they take him to the hospital. She says, Want me to bring anything from home? What about ice cream? And he says, Coffee. 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 So let's make coffee ice cream from Jaws. In other words, traditional coffee ice cream, which consists of cream, eggs, because it's a custard ice cream, and coffee. <laughs> Okay, now you can use um, espresso powder, you, which will make it fancier. I'm using what was available in 1975, which is instant coffee. And I'm gonna tell you, it makes the most delicious ice cream. And if I can't find that, what can I do? Well, I can do anything. I'm the chief of police. You can do anything, I'm the chief of police. Just like I thought, came up the Gulf Streams from Southern Waters. You need a car, did he? No, a tiger shark is like a garbage can. It'll eat anything. <laughs> okay. okay, coffee ice cream. The, the reality is it's vanilla ice cream with coffee in it. Okay, so we're just gonna make vanilla ice cream, which we've made before. So this is gonna be two cups of cream. It's a custard ice cream. It's a slight challenge. You could also make it Philadelphia style with no eggs. Here we go. Retain. This. Now you're going to put three quarters of a cup of sugar, which is approximately this. <laughs> you kind of want to see a little mound. I mean, I've made so many ice creams, I don't really measure it anymore. And also the question is, how sweet do you want it to be? It's up to you. Stir this around a little bit. Turn on your heat. Now, when, without the eggs, you can start off fairly warm, as long as you keep an eye on it. It's when the eggs come in that you have to be careful. I'm gonna go ahead and put some vanilla in this. Hi, Lila vanilla paste. These guys are the bomb. Kind of enhances the coffee. Interesting thing about coffee ice cream. It kind of tastes like maple ice cream in a weird way. 
Lynn is claiming there's some argument on the internet about whether the kid asked for coffee ice cream. The kid asked for coffee ice cream. Now, I'm gonna put four egg yolks. So here's four, four egg yolks. I would suggest not using fancy espresso powder or coffee extract. Use like instant coffee dark roast. Cause you'll get like that sort of old school coffee ice cream flavor and not like gourmet. Wait until this is fairly warm. The next day after I saw Jaws, my friends were like, we're going to South Beach, you wanna come? And I'm like, no. So honestly, I haven't been in the Atlantic Ocean since 1975. I, I don't think I'm alone. So as a semi-expert custard maker, this is hot. I can't put my hand on it. I'm gonna teach the eggs. A little bit of warm. A little bit of warm and in. So what I did just then is called tempering the eggs, okay? Now you have to turn it down to low. If you're making creme anglaise, you simply put more egg yolks in, but you also stir it constantly. With ice cream, you can get away with not hovering over it because you can sieve it. I'm gonna put the coffee in now. You know, hullabaloo, people tell you to do all different things. You're just making coffee flavored milk. I'm gonna put approximately almost three. Uh, three is strong. This is literally Folger's classic roast. It's not even the dark one. And the one I made yesterday, looks and tastes like really good coffee that you get when you say in 1978 or something, let's get a coffee. That's what it tastes like. Some things were much worse, like cancer care was much worse, but a lot of stuff was kind of better, like movies. <laughs> Have you ever seen that thing on the internet when they show you the McDonald's portion size? What a large was in 1975 compared to what a large is now? Now this is gonna look weird and you're gonna panic. Okay, don't panic. Don't panic, George. Don't panic. It's gonna make these weird lumps and stuff. Don't, don't worry. Remember, you're gonna pour this into a, another cup of cream before you put it in the fridge overnight. So when you're tasting it, remember, another cup of liquid is going in there in terms of how strong the coffee is. Okay, I'm just kind of agitating this. I'm waiting until it's quite hot when I put my finger in it. I'm gonna taste it to make sure I like the amount of coffee. Look, Ma, I got bit by a vampire. I hit by a vampire. Why the kid has a New York accent, we don't know, but anyway. Unless he's saying vampire. Come to think of it, it might be a Boston accent. They're in the yard, not too far from the car. Ooh, I think I'm wrong. I don't think he has a New York accent. I'm gonna see how hot this is. Ooh, it's quite hot. I'm gonna put a cup of cream in another container. I'm gonna sieve this in here, and then I'm gonna put it in the fridge. So I like the way that looks. See the line stays. That means it's custard, or it's custard enough for ice cream. Get your sieve. Here we go, ready? Oh, look at that. So that looks like coffee ice cream to me. I'm just gonna taste it for coffeeness. Coffee ice cream is dope. This is really good ice cream. It almost has a funny like maple flavor. I think it's the coffee and the sugar and maybe the vanilla. So you're gonna put this on one side with a cloth over it if you have flies in your kitchen. And you're gonna wait till it's room temperature. Then you're gonna put a lid on it and put it in the fridge overnight. Magic occurs. Can I also recommend this product? <laughs> okay. This is a pre-made Bloody Mary. What's it called, Reg? Zing! Zing! They're fantastic. And I happen to have a fully rested overnight version right here. I'm gonna just put this in my ice cream maker that I've chilled. If you've bought the big Cuisinart, you can chill it by turning it on. If you don't, you have to freeze it and all this nonsense, but soon we will have delicious coffee ice cream. Here's our very loud ice cream maker. Now this is, see how thick that is compared to the one that we just made? I put the gasket on, which I don't usually do because I like to do this now to get the, all the vanilla off the bottom before I pour it in. This is very cold, I pre-chilled it. These are very convenient weck jars. They are exactly the amount of ice cream that the ice cream maker makes. Uh, it's basically vanilla ice cream, so it will churn quickly. Churn away, little ice cream. 
ice cream is done. I pre-chilled my container, like you always must do. And the most critical time for your ice cream, as you know, is this moment between the machine and the freezer. I usually say this is a two-person job. Get this off of here and in the bowl as quickly as possible. As the ice cream melts, it forms crystals. And the crystals are the death of a good ice cream. You'll ruin your churn and everything. Okay, I'm smoothing this out a little bit. Has a nice uh, consistency. Scooping it out, putting it in, scooping it out and putting it in. Pressing it down so there's no air pockets is what I'm doing. Should be really good. So the other thing to remember about coffee ice cream is that it's got coffee in it. No, I'm serious, you forget and you give it to little kids. I don't have a cap for this, so I'm gonna use a tinfoil top. Voila, voila, comme ça. In the freezer. First of all, I literally think I could watch Jaws and say every word of the movie. If you haven't seen it, it might be too late when this comes out. They re-released it on IMAX this year. Catch it on IMAX. And try to get some deep quotes in your head so you're not saying, You're gonna need a bigger boat. Or anything else from Jaws, except for deep cult quotes like coffee. Let's make Nipples of Venus, Capazzoli di Venere. So, Nipples of Venus, it's really a truffle. Initially, Lynn discovered that they were probably brown, as in the movie Chocola, which I've never seen, even though I love that lady. I love Julia Pinoche. In Amadeus, they were white. Now, whether that's something that they researched, being Milos Forman, they, they probably researched it, but it's also possible that it was the first time they were dipped in white chocolate. You know, Foreman, let's not forget, also directed, you know, Cuckoo's Nest and stuff like that. Interestingly, also shot by Bill Butler, the DP of Jaws. So anyways, Nipples of Venus. Uh, there's actually some rumor that Mozart was jealous of Salieri historically. Peter Schaffer, the writer of Amadeus, also the writer of Equus, which was my senior thesis, made up a great story. Whether it's true or not is, you know, obviously up for grabs. So. Although I am sumptuously dressed, I won't be able to wear this while I'm making the nipples of Venus on account of it stinks and it's really hot. So the first thing we're gonna do is melt six ounces of chocolate. Now, I made these last night. Um, I'll tell you that they, they're super fun and hilarious. Turn on your scale, put the container on the scale and then press the on off button again and it'll tear, which means it will remove the weight of this thing. And then you can use a container to measure. I know you know that. This is excellent, excellent, excellent chocolate by Amade Us. Uh, I'm just measuring six ounces of this. It's more than you think. That's only two and a half ounces. Four and a half. 5.5. 5.8, six. This is white chocolate, which we're also gonna measure, but first of all, I'm just gonna put this in the Ban Marie. If you melt chocolate too fast, the fat and the chocolate will separate. So you wanna keep this very low. It's already quite hot. So that's gonna slowly melt while we make the rest of the nipples of Venus. I'm measuring the white chocolate which is basically cocoa butter candy. So here's my bowl. I push the button again, eight ounces. Perfect. Um, you're supposed to use chestnuts. Good luck finding them. I found one bag in Brooklyn, but other, besides that, there's no chestnuts <laughs> and they were expired. Well, I wouldn't want to have no chestnut. I said, I, I, are you sure? And he goes, no, uh, uh, Elaine, we have a chestnut. No, we don't have no chestnut. It's a not, no time of year, no chestnut. And then I went around the corner and there, there it was. And I said, ah, like this. And he goes, oh, you, you're good. So we're gonna use almonds, which is fine. Actually, Lenny bought sliced almonds, which I think I'm gonna use. So this is a lot of almonds. Now, when I initially made this last night, I didn't have enough um, nuts. I was like, ah, it doesn't matter. It does matter. You need the, the amount of nuts that they request. 
because it's the it's like the flour that holds the thing together. Here we go. 14 ounces of nuts. Use 14 ounces. Okay, so take five tablespoons of butter that's soft. You're making candy, but it's a really easy candy. And I'm going to put in a third of a cup of sugar. You don't have to use this. In fact, in the recipe, they tell you to use um, a spatula. I want you to cream this until it's light and fluffy. You recognize what that is? I saw that on Broadway. Do you know who played Salieri when I saw it? Ian McKellen. Peter Firth played Amadeus, who was actually the lead, interestingly, in Equus. Okay, so here we go. We got the nuts in here. We're gonna pulse these. You want this fine, but you're not making almond butter. The one from uh, Magic Flute's almost impossible to sing it. So I'm making it into a fine sand. That's perfect. Okay, I'm just gonna add some salt. Now think of a truffle. Sweet, sweet, sweet. The salt really helps. Can somebody take a picture of that? Try, try and stay awake. Salt. I'm putting kind of a lot of salt. They want you to put cayenne. Ugh, I wouldn't bother with it. If you have it at hand, put it in. I'm just pulsing this. I'm now very wary of turning it into paste. They want you to put booze in it, a quarter cup. What is the difference between cognac and armagnac? It's pretty interesting. They want you to use cognac. Cognac is made from grapes from the cognac region. That's why it's called cognac. Armagnac is more rustic. It's more robust. And I think it's, it's perfect for this application. So the other big difference is that Armagnac is distilled once, so it's more forward, if you want to use a polite term. And cognac is distilled three times, which is why it's so like gorgeous and smooth. Okay, I'm gonna use Armagnac because having made these yesterday, they're pretty sweet. I'm gonna pulse this. It's a fun thing to make at Christmas, maybe. I'm now going to put this into the butter mixture. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of pour this into, whoopsie, I'm combining it. I wouldn't do this in the food processor because then you're running the risk of almond butter, which you don't want. I wanna make sure by tasting it that it has enough booze in it, which I think is one of the reasons why the character likes them. It's because they have alcohol in them. Was he an alcoholic? I don't know. I'm putting in the melted chocolate. Uh, chocolate is pricey. Making this is a nice gift to your friends, especially because you must use high quality chocolate. I'm mixing this in until it's well incorporated. Now I found last night that it's better if you put this in the fridge for just a few minutes before you roll the balls. You want to cover this for a short time because it firms up quickly. You could, you could make the balls, but it's a little bit soft. 10 minutes, if that. Put this on it though, if you're gonna leave it longer. Now, you could take this, put it in a plastic container and freeze it, and then make them anytime you want, if you don't do the dip, which we're gonna, we're gonna make them fancy. I'm gonna put this in the fridge. That zing zang's looking pretty good. So what we're gonna do now is make a, a coating for these things. This is um, not easy. We're gonna temper white chocolate. If you don't temper it and you just melt it, the finish will be matte, which is why when people make candy at home, it never looks like candy because they don't temper the chocolate properly. So we reserved 20% of our white chocolate and I'm gonna put the other 80% on the Ban Marie, which I'm now gonna turn down. You wanna melt this until it's like 105, question mark. That's not the temperature for tempered chocolate, but we'll see uh, if it's because it's white chocolate. Um, on an instant read, also questionable. You're supposed to use a candy thermometer, but we're gonna follow the recipe. Is it gonna split? 
Nobody knows. Boom, 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 boom. We're also not going to use a red nipple. We're just going to use a piece of chocolate. Okay? They have dark aureolas, the ladies who possess these breasts. You're supposed to make white confectioner's icing and pipe nipples. We're not doing that. One of the things about tempering chocolate, remember that impossible candy class we went to, Regina? One of the things you do is you teach the melted chocolate about itself by putting tempered chocolate into the melted chocolate at the end, and it somehow trains the molecules. Let me tell you something. Tempering chocolate is frickin' impossible, unless you're a candy maker, which I'm not. Oh, yeah. Seems to be melting. I'm gonna sort of remove it. Oh, it's really burning my hands. I don't know if this is gonna work, but it sure is interesting. <laughs> now I'm supposed to put in the unmelted chocolate and stir until melted. Oh, it got slightly looser. That's interesting. Now, people who make chocolate below, please comment about what I'm doing wrong. I mean, this seems right, but I'm just like, you can't pour this though. They want you to pour it. That's not right. Spoon on. Uh -huh. Now they tell you to keep your warm water pan in case you need to reheat the uh, chocolate. Through the magic of television, I happen to have a tray of pre-rolled balls. Voila. They're very cold. And just for the sake of argument, I'm gonna show you how you roll it. It's very simple. Just gonna take the size you want and go like this. Right? Make it look like a breast. This is still pretty soft. Then you set this on a tray and put it in the fridge. I'm using a paintbrush because every other method we used didn't work. <laughs> And this is uh, time sensitive, guys, because the truffle itself melts. So here we go, continuing. This is a misshapen breast. And the bottoms will be hidden by the cups, so we're not too concerned about the bottoms. Now I think this should be thinner and you should be able to dip it in with a toothpick. Right below if you have some idea of how to make it more dippable. I'm gonna cool these off and give them a second coat. This is, um, should be looser so that you can go like this with a toothpick and cover it and then just like that. So there's something funny about it being kind of like icing. I probably did something wrong. I'm putting these in the fridge. I'm gonna just give these a second coat. Lynn did the second coat on the ones that look so beautiful because she's very good at that stuff. The second coat is definitely smoother and more uh, easy. It's also gripping on to its like kind, you know, the white chocolate. Now, these are chilled, so I'm just gonna put these in their little candy holders, so cute. This one's strangely huge. <laughs> I'm gonna use a chocolate chip as the nip. I'm just using a little bit of this stuff to glue on the, the nip. Those look hilarious. They don't look that far from the movie. <laughs> Theirs were definitely dipped, though. There's no brush marks on theirs. Nipples of Venus. Close encounters of the third kind. Okay, I happen to wish more than anything in the world that I am on planet Earth when there is actual contact from outer space. I believe there's probably other life in the universe. I don't think Earth has ever been visited kind of have the same feeling about that as I do about ghosts, which is why the big mystery? Why is it always one single person? Why is it always when nobody else can see? I mean, it's suspect. Now, UFOs, same thing. The guy's in his car, oh, he's alone. Hmm, he gets taken up in the spaceship, but nobody saw, and then he miraculously came home two days later. Anyway, the movie is a masterpiece. There's so many brilliant scenes in that movie, one of them being the mashed potato scene. We, we did make whipped potatoes, so the Robuchon style, style, whipped potatoes. We didn't use a tammy, okay? But we did make whipped potatoes. These are not as luxurious. They're starchier. They're more 70s. Uh, they have less ingredients and they're chunkier. We're not using a ricer, we're using a masher. I'm going to sort of half acidly take the skins off. The scene is shot dark, but I think there's skins on the potatoes. These are boiled. I boiled them until the toothpick went straight through. You should mash or rice potatoes hot or warm. Close Encounters also has one of the great uses of the word what. 
So in my plays, my characters say, what? A lot. And one of the greatest what's is in Close Encounters. When, when Ronnie, his wife, Terry Gar, is leaving him because he's pulling up the garden and uh, he goes out to the car and he goes, Ronnie, Ronnie, what are you doing? Where are you taking the kids? You're acting crazy. And she rolls down the window and she goes, what? And then the amazing scene where he's in the living room after he built the huge tower, it comes on the news and you see Devil's Tower, Wyoming, which is a real place. So the, the, the group called SETI, which is Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, it's a good name, it's a real thing. When the aliens come down, after the abducted people come down, and there's a man who steps forward and he puts a pipe in his mouth, that's the president of SETI, the real life president. It's kind of beautiful that he has him in the movie. Something that makes me cry in that movie every freaking time I see it is the prayer that the priest says to the astronauts that have been selected to go on the alien spaceship. Grant these pilgrims, we pray, a happy journey. Mostly because it has the word pilgrims in it. There's a sadder word, deeper word than pilgrim, I don't know. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna mash them. I'm pretending I'm Terry Garr in 1970. I'm simply hitting these as hard as I can. I'm not thinking of Joel Robuchon. I am literally smashing them with a masher. I'm gonna add a little bit of milk. Not a lot, guys. We don't want it to be fancy. Let's see, and some salt and peps. So this, unlike Dutch's potatoes, these cannot make it in the fridge overnight. It's the egg that makes Dutch's potatoes um, make it overnight. That's why it's a great dish for Christmas. I mean, I can remember when nobody had a pepper grinder in their house. It was like an unseen thing. The only time you ever saw a pepper grinder was in a restaurant, for reals. This is such a great masher. Remember we did the uh, apples for the applesauce with this? It makes such cute little shapes. Little tubes. Huh? Okay, I don't want to make it too soft. You have to be able to sculpt them. If you want it, lesson in direction. Watch the air traffic controller scene from Close Encounters. Aries 31, descend and maintain flight level 310. Flawless direction from beginning to end. They're the perfect consistency right now. I'm sure they used prop potatoes because um, if they were really good mashed potatoes, they wouldn't do what he does. So I'm not gonna put butter, actually. It looks exactly right, right? So here we go, mashed potatoes. I know you may have noticed there's something strange with Randy. We now have uncorrelated targets approaching from the north northwest. I don't think we could have asked for a more beautiful evening, do you? If you haven't seen Close Encounters recently, I highly recommend that you watch Close Encounters. It's kind of flawless. I would avoid the director's cut. Sometimes they're great. Sometimes they're not so great. And man, oh man, Shevitz, do I hope I'm here when they finally come. How exciting, how exciting would that be to have a close encounter of the third kind? The next time you watch Taxi Driver, pretend, convince your body and your mind that you've never seen it before. Okay, so say, oh, Taxi Driver, hmm. oh, it's Scorsese, yeah, I'll watch this. Pretend you've never watched it. And I challenge you to find a mistake in that movie. So Taxi Driver, what food is in Taxi Driver? There's jam and bread. Didn't seem too much like too much of a challenge. We could have made our own confiture, but we decided not to. To do the scene where he goes to the diner with Sybil Shepherd 
Uh, he orders a slice of apple pie with melted cheese. I had black coffee and apple pie with a slice of melted yellow cheese. I think that was a good selection. We're gonna make miniature apple pies, even though what he ate in the, you can barely see it, in the movie is a slice, I believe, with melted cheese. We're gonna do the melted cheese on, on one of them. Apple pie. Pies are really, really simple. The, the thing about making a pie is your pastry and the filling not being runny. We're basically gonna make some pastry. I have some Magic of TV ones. And then I'm going to stew some sliced apples. We're gonna arrange them in the pastry and bake it. Very simple. You don't blind bake an apple because you want the apples to cook. You have time for it to cook, so it's, and we're gonna make it thin. So let's make some apple pie, but first, let's get organized. You mean organized? Organized. Organized, it's a joke. Here is some butter that wouldn't take it anymore. Here is a man who would not take it anymore. Here is. The fact that it goes here is dot, dot, dot. Oh, it's so great. Ramsey. Okay, two and a half cups of flour. And I have put some sugar, like maybe, maybe two tablespoons, maybe less, maybe more. I already put some, I'm gonna put a little more. And some salt, we need salt. I love thee more than salt, which is hard to say about anybody. I'm now going to just quickly pulse this. I'm now, I have frozen this, this butter. I'm gonna cut it this way down the middle. It should be difficult. Okay. I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna cut like this. Uh, it's very, it's imperative to use cold butter. Now this you can fudge. My pieces last night were huge. It doesn't matter. Okay, I cut this into cubes. I'm gonna sprinkle it around my pastry like this. Once in your life, you should make pastry without the food processor. Then you never have to make it without the food processor again. The reason why you should do it once with the processor is so that you understand the process. <laughs> I'm now gonna pulse this until the butter is pea-sized. Pulse. Makes a big mess, bum, 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 bum. So what I'm looking for are pea-sized shapes. I have, still have large pieces, okay? Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm going to put an egg yolk in it. Actually, I'm gonna put a whole egg. I usually use an egg, it makes it a little more pliable. Here comes the exciting part. You're like, you're at your house going, I just made this recipe because this dumb girl on TV told me there's no way this is ever gonna work. Check this out. Watch it. Something's happening. What's happening? As she says in Poltergeist. What's happening? Oh, oh, oh. Oh boy. I think it needs a little more water. Tiny bit. Come on, mama. There you go, there you go. That's what you're looking for. There we go. Perfect. It's good to refrigerate it for at least an hour. You can make it a day in advance, or maybe two days, but I wouldn't go too far beyond that. Do not need this, please. So then what I do is this. I kind of make it look nice. If I see wrinkles, I rub the wrinkle like this. Fold it, flip it, make it look nice while it's resting. Perfection. So what I do is this, in order to make it into an oval, unless you're making a square pastry. You wanna store it, kind of in the shape that you're gonna make it into, right? Clean the edges, make them all smooth, push together any wrinkles that you see, flip it, same thing, okay? So it looks like that while it's resting. In the fridge with you. One, two, three. So we're gonna do a really, really simple interior, which is essentially semi-stewed caramelized apples with lemon juice, and I mean, it's very, very easy. And we're not making a huge apple pie. We're making these cute little mini ones, which aren't in the movie, but oh well. This is the most ingenious thing ever created. Whoever invented this as a complete total genius. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. I like to use Honeycrisp. This, it's slightly off center, so I'm just gonna cut that. I'm gonna cut that out. 
and I'm gonna put these perfect slices in this bowl. If you're making anything with a lot of apples, you need this. It's brilliant. I don't know how the guy thought of it. It'll core an apple perfectly. It's exciting. Once again, it's off center slightly, which is because apples were a lot bigger than when Mr. Vittorio or whatever his name has made this machine. I'm gonna squirt a little lemon juice on these right away so they don't brown. Okay, I just put a little lemon juice on here. I'm now going to cover them in sugar. Okay, we're going to roll out the pastry. Don't over flour whatever you do because uh, you'll have raw flour in your pastry. So this I made last night. It's a little sweaty. I let it um, come to sort of room temperature while we were talking. It's a little bit sweaty, so I'm just gonna do that. If your pastry gets stuck to the table, you can use a pastry scraper or you can use a piece of dental floss, unused of course, uh, but really you, you wanna prevent that from happening. But you don't wanna over flour it because then you're running a risk. Don't panic. So as you work with it, it becomes more workable, which is a funny thing about it. But if you overwork it, it'll be overworked, as Paul Hollywood would say. Okay, I'm gonna cut the uh, bottoms. So I need the sides, so I'm gonna cut this slightly wider than it is. Now what I wanna do is cut strips. These are starting to become too hot. So we need to get this back in the fridge. Pastry is one of the few things that you wanna sort of cook from the fridge, especially puff pastry. I'm just gonna kind of place this a little bit better before we chill it. You want a high side, because you're gonna cut the side like this, beautiful. Fridge it while you're making the interior, okay? I just wanna also quickly tell you, look at how beautiful this is. This is the lid. These are some other pieces. This was a present from Michael. And he had them relined for me. And they are so classically gorgeous. And we also got this like fish thing. Thank you, Michael. Uh, okay, we're gonna use this. We're really essentially just melting the sugar and heating the apples because it's gonna cook in the pie. And we don't wanna add a, a lot of uh, extra liquid. So this is copper, obviously, conducts heat beautifully. I'll go ahead and put that in. Put some more sugar. Maybe a little bit of vanilla paste. How about Yuletide cheer? I bet you yeah, that's the right. Yeah, that's good. This is an incredible King Arthur product that I use to make their spice cake. It's cardamom, coriander, orange peel, mace, allspice, and nutmeg. I mean, it's... Fantastic. Now some liquid is coming out of the apples already. It's tart. I'm gonna cook this down. Then I'm gonna take the apples out and I'm gonna reduce the liquid a little bit. It's a great pot. I mean, what a present. And then he secretly took them to be relined because the lining was shot, you know? They're from uh, Du Parquet, which is an American company. These are also rare because they have, um, they were from a commercial kitchen and they're numbered. Some of them were relined by another company and they marked their name over Du Parquet. It says mutual, can you see that? So apparently the mutual over stamp makes them even rarer. Okay, I wanna take the apples out so that they're not soft in the pie. Now, if you left this in, uh, you'd be making applesauce. <laughs> I'm gonna reduce this. Careful of this, because it will, it will boil. I'm caramelizing it. What's your favorite Scorsese movie, Nick? It might be Taxi Driver. Yeah. What about when he puts his finger in the drop? He goes, plop, plop. I'm like, they must have been crying with joy. All right, this looks good to me. It's thick and lovely. It's quite reduced. Bubbles are big, and they're taking a long time to pop. I'm gonna leave this in here while I arrange our pies. I took these out of the fridge. I'm uh, just trimming these, and I'm sort of cutting them a little bit close 
You could make them open if you wanted. Why don't we make one open and one not open? Look how beautiful that is. Follow this guy, Cedric Grolet. He's a pastry guy on Instagram, and he makes false fruits and things that are just unbelievable. I love that guy. This will be the one without the top because I'm cutting it too small. I'm gonna try to make this as pretty as I can because I normally just dump it in. Diner pie can be really good, but I'm sure it wasn't quite as gorgeous as this one's gonna be. Maybe you should change direction. It still looks beautiful, I think. But this will be the cheese one. Now, the one that's gonna have the top. Look at this, I made a little rose with a little rosy center in it, it's so cute. All right, we need an egg wash. This is nothing like the one at the diner, trust me. All right, this is a, there, it's starting to disintegrate, so we need to get this in the oven fit swiftly, okay? It's starting to kind of fall apart. My pies aren't superb, but they're okay. You know what I could try to do is, I could try to do an entire top. Hold on, let's put this one in the fridge. Do you remember the movie, um, The Andromeda Strain? That was the underground, like, pathogen research. Correct. Okay. It has a scene where they're about to figure something out, and the computer bl starts blinking, and the lady lied about her medical status, and she has epilepsy. So right before the computer is about to tell them the answer, it's not a plot point, she has a seizure, and she doesn't see it because it's blinking like this that it has the answer. That's the famous movie that has level C is now terminated that they stole from liberally in Alien. Ready? Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh. Not <laughs> The dogs got out because I say that when I do their food. Oh boy. Oh boy. Look at this cute little pie I made. It's a cute idea, labor intensive. Don't cut it too short, because you, you wanna crimp it. So you're, what I'm doing right now is kind of putting the two pieces together. Air holes. I just felt a lick on my leg from a dog, a dog called Joni Poo. Okay, I'm just gonna fridge this for one second. You may have noticed I forgot to put the caramel in. We'll, we'll drizzle it on later. <laughs> Here they are. I have this on 350 convection. You can use convection for pies. It's actually really good for pies because the circulating hot air makes a crispy crust. Not so good for cakes, never for meringue. Excellent for cannelés. Never meringue. Goodbye, little pies. I'm going to put the cheese on the lattice pie. So I'm removing the one with the top. I'm just gonna take my slice of cheese and I'm just gonna put it across the top. I'm gonna keep an eye on it because it's gonna melt quickly. I'm gonna leave it in there until it gets nice and bubbly. Uh, it's bubbling. Here we go. I think it looks super cute and hilarious and very 1970s. Apple pie. I think it was a good choice. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's amore. Or if you're Frank Sinatra, just sing whatever melody you want because that's what he always did. Go Frank. Anyways, Moonstruck. Lynn and I watch it every year. It's such a great movie. The actors are just at a sort of funny peak for them. Cher is, of course, a great actor. Olympia Dukakis. Nicolas Cage before he went crazy and then became sane again. Uh, Moonstruck is fantastic. It's John Patrick Shanley and it's beautiful writing and it's just a lovely, beautiful story. I personally love the scene where she comes back from, oh my God, she's gonna take, she's gonna take out the gray when she takes the gray out of her hair. Are you there, Bettina? She's gonna take gray. <laughs> and she's so beautiful. She, what is she like, 34 there, Lenny? Yeah. And uh, she gets her hair done and she gets her nails done and she buys new clothes and then she goes back to the house and she has this like wonderful thing that it's always surprised me that a man directed it because it's what you do when you buy like some new stuff and you get your hair done and your nails done and you're just in your house and looking at the stuff you bought and 
listening to music. I wish I looked like Cher, but what can you do? <laughs> We're gonna make a dish from Moonstruck. There's a lot of food in Moonstruck. The one that Linny kind of picked up, which I think is a really interesting one, is the egg in the toast, which is earlier in the movie. It's not in the famous breakfast scene. That's oatmeal. You want oatmeal? This is basically eggs in a hole. It actually has 69 other names. Some of them might be eggs in a frame, bullseye, ox eye, camel's eyes, elephant tracks, one-eyed Susan, Birmingham eggs, guest house eggs, hole in one, circus toast. <laughs> so we're gonna make circus toast. <laughs> I bought some really beautiful bread. I used to call this uh, messy bread for the reason that when you cut it, it essentially cannons crumbs all over the kitchen. So I usually cut it outside. So I just cut two fairly substantial pieces. I'm gonna take this cutter and I'm gonna cut out a center hole in each piece of bread. And then we're basically gonna fry the bread and put an egg in it, it's very easy. But it's kind of delightful. If you wanna be really fancy, you also fry the circle and then you kind of prop the circle on the egg. Interestingly, Madeline, when she was 12 or 11, watched Moonstruck with me for the first time. And I asked her, what line or what scene did you like the most? And she said her favorite moment was when Olympia Dukakis says, Do you love him, Loretta? Ma, I love him awful. Oh God, that's too bad. Madeline loved that. Oh, because the woman knows that Olympia Dukakis also knows what it is to love somebody awful. Okay, here we go. Circular cutter. Perfection. All right, basically I'm just gonna melt some butter and a little bit, a little bit of oil so the butter doesn't burn. I'm gonna fry the toast when I flip it, I'm gonna crack the egg in it. On the side, I thought it would be delightful to cut up a few of these pepper dews, which are not what's in the movie. She uses regular um, red peppers. Or maybe they're pickled red peppers. But these are pepper dews, and I'm gonna chop them up. Ah, uh, my Perusi forager. Just gonna cut these in half. All right, there we go. A little martini. Let's take it to the stage. And I am having a pretty watered down martini because Mrs. Castorini, Loretta's mother, has a martini when she meets the guy from Say Anything in that fabulous restaurant where the guy cleans the table like this. You know, when he's cleaning the table, she has a martini. And man, when you're watching it, you're like, hmm, maybe I'll have a martini. So I'm gonna put some butter in here. This is really pretty facile butter, and I'm gonna put a little bit of oil so that the butter doesn't burn. It's luxurious, it's Sunday breakfast. You know, it's not for like every day or you'll have a heart attack. Just a little bit of oil. Keeps the butter from burning, but you still have to watch it. I'm gonna put a little bit of salt. So what's gonna happen? I'll tell you what's gonna happen. The bread is gonna soak up a lot of this butter. I'm gonna do one piece, okay? Actually, I'll do both. And there are little, little rounds. Um, I turned it back up because this, of course, cooled it down. It's, see how beautiful that is, everybody? Oh yeah. Now I'm gonna crack the eggs in, hopefully without breaking the yolk. I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. A Little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt. You might notice there's not a lot of butter left in the bottom. It's all been soaked up by the bread. <laughs> I'm waiting for the whites to be completely uh, white. I can tell by the way the egg is moving that it's almost done. I'm gonna try and flip it in the shortest flippage that I can. Like, comme ça, voila. In the movie, she um, cooks the peppers with this, but uh, her pan is much, much bigger. I'm just gonna heat these. Serve them up. Hot and fresh. That is a breakfast fit 
for a king or a queen with a hot coffee and a zing zang, Reg. <laughs> Bloody Mary, look at that. This is just decadent deliciousness. When the eggs hit your eye like a bread with a hole, that's amore. Uh, eggs in a hole, circus eggs, full moon eggs, moonstruck eggs. La, na -li -la, na -li -la. Ha -di -da -di -da -dun 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 -dun. Sorry, eggs in a hole. Dinner party tonight goes to the movies. Wow, what a day we had. We watched Moonstruck, Eggs in a Hole, Tissue Paper, Lipstick. Then we went to do, 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 do. We made traditional mashed potatoes. In other words, starchy. Then from Taxi Driver, we had apple pie with a melted slice of yellow cheese. I think it was a good choice. From Jaws, what a masterwork. 26 years old he was when he directed that. 26, absorb that. Coffee ice cream. From Amadeus, the Foreman masterpiece. Nipples of Venus. They gave us a little problem, but they worked out okay in the end. You can have another one if you like. We hope you enjoyed dinner party tonight. We took you to see Close Encounters. Taxi driver. You talking to me? Amadeus. <laughs> Moonstruck. And Jaws. Why not take an evening when you're gonna watch some crap television show and watch one of those movies and pretend you've never seen it? Try it out. I'm telling you. Watch old movies, they matter. Dinner party tonight. Why not? Charlie says, love my good and plenty. Charlie says, what really rings the bell. Charlie says, love my good and plenty. Don't know any other candy that I love so well. Mm. Good and plenty, good and plenty, good and plenty, good and plenty.